Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my sewing room. Today is Monday, June 6th, 2022, and I'm super excited because it's the kickoff of the Granny Square Along. Now, I know I've been talking about the Granny Square Along for over a year and uh, showed you the invitation and I showed you how to make Granny Squares and, you know, in preparation of that, and did several tutorials on how to put your granny squares together, how to join the rows of the afghan that I'm making, and uh, you know, I'll continue that too. But what I'll be doing all summer long during the granny square along is just crocheting as many granny squares as I can and doing a lot of different things with them, and then I'll be showing you what I'm doing with them um, besides my afghan. You know, I'll be showing pillows, I have other projects, um, small projects and medium, and the afghan being my large project. And so I invite you to just sew, um, so crochet as many granny squares as you can all summer long, and you can do a small project, just one, or a big one, just do a pillow, do an afghan, do whatever your heart desires. And uh, I think it will be really fun, all of us crocheting together. I've seen a lot of you crocheting uh, my granny squares all year long and even over a year since I did my tutorial. And I thank you so much. And it's so fun to see all of you doing all the different combinations with my chunky thread yarn. And my new colors are here, making 32 colors. And so that's really fun. But I also wanted to talk about that um, it has always been my intention to do three things with Granny Squares this summer to celebrate the summer of Granny Squares. And so I'll talk about the crochet again lastly, um, but I also wanted to talk to you that I have a link with this that I designed. So I have a link to this on the Riley Blake Designs website that I did a long time ago when I introduced uh, my chunky thread storyboard and talked about things like that and I designed these back then knowing that I was going to release these on the day of the opening of the granny square. So what this is is a diagram and it just talks about everything that I've used and what this is if you haven't seen these before is some genius I don't know who did a long time ago came up with symbols for each stitch uh, for each crochet stitch. So back in the day when my grandma taught me to crochet, I either just learned by looking at her crochet or by a page of a pattern where everything was written out, which was always really difficult for me. That doesn't mean it's difficult for everyone, but I am more of a visual person, so I like diagrams. And so this is right up my alley because what this is a di is a diagram. And so this little symbol right here is a chain stitch so you know that you chain four and then you chain two and then this is your double crochet this is your stand in if you've done my granny squares you know what i'm talking about here's your chain two for the corners here's your three double crochet here's your chain two for that corner so that's for your first round and then these little dots right here is your slip stitch so you know where to join to change colors to do your second round and again you just keep going this is a four round granny just like my granny that I did in my tutorial here, preparing for this granny square along. And then I also, let me take this off the clipboard. So this, this page is a free download. And then I went ahead and wrote, you know, did a written two for my stitches, for those of you who like the written, and this might help you to sew a slip stitch. And then it just tells you a paragraph on how to do a slip stitch, chain stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, triple crochet, and a double triple crochet. And so this is USA terms, just so you know. And so I hope um, that you find those handy, those little charts. I just keep them on my uh, cute little clipboard here and keep them with my crochet. And uh, it really helps um, to have a visual sometimes to look at. So I just wanted to tell you about those. And so that's the crochet part. Again, I'm gonna to talk to you about my afghan here at the end. But the second thing I wanted to do was to celebrate was of course, for those of you quilters, because of course I'm a quilter, I wanted to do some great granny squares this summer. 
with my Great Granny Squared book. This is the second book that I ever did with It's So Emma, or my publishers, and have been forever. They are also my cross-stitch publishers. Let's see, this is in 2014. So quite a while ago, I did this book. So this is the cover quilt, and a lot of people are doing the cover quilt. A lot of quilt shops are doing the cover quilt and different fabric collections of mine, and I love that. And then, I, so those are 12 inch blocks and I also have six inch blocks pattern in here. And what I'm gonna do is in the book, let me turn to that. So I have runners in the book, table runners made with six inch. Let me show those photos. Here's one where you have all three of them and I just use different solid colored backgrounds for those but I thought it would be really fun to use one of my B backgrounds and make a quilt, which means I would do the exact same measurements that the runner is. I would just make more and join them together. And I'm gonna use the same background and I'm gonna do um, six inch blocks. And so those are one and a half inch squares cut. So exactly the same in the book. So you can do 12 inch blocks, six inch blocks. You can make a whole quilt. You can do pillows. You can do whatever you want, but just you know, to quilt and to sew to celebrate the Granny Square, I think is gonna be really fun. And so when I designed the Great Granny Square book, I did four rounds. I guess four rounds seems to be my favorite because I just kind of do that a lot. But, um, and what I did was I called this um, middle square, the baby, and then this second round, the mama, and then this one, the granny, the third round, and then this is the great granny. And so that's how I came up with the name great granny and while I call them great granny squares. And um, I've always loved making this block. So if you're gonna do um, six inch blocks, my recommendation when sewing, of course, I'm not doing a tutorial on that, but step by step in the book, tells you all the cutting and everything that you need. But my recommendation is to, pressure seams open, except for these last corner ones. That's much easier to press those out. And then of course we trim it up in the method from the book using the six and a half inch trim it ruler, which makes it really, really nice. Now, when I wrote that book, I didn't even have this ruler on the market, but you can see how nice that is to line up. Let me see if I can, I hope that's not a super duper glare, but it really helps to trim it because you can see this line right here going down the center of these. And you can see this goes down the center this way. You know, you can really line up everything to trim it off and you don't have to guess. This is exactly the center. And then if you're doing 12 inch blocks, you can use my 12 and a half inch trim it ruler. But what I did with these is I grabbed out of you know, my bag of lots of grannies that I've been making for my afghan. I just randomly grabbed four that had kind of like different border colors that I thought, you know, might look fun together or whatever. Uh, these are ones that I had already crocheted and that's what I used as my guide. I think it's really fun to find that inspiration for something you already have done. And so I don't know if you can see that, but this is my inspiration also for sewing the granny squares on what colors to pick because I'm gonna be sewing a lot of these. And so that's what I'll be doing. I'll just be taking granny squares and using them as a guide. So here's one, here's this one that matches that one. And when I say match, I just, you know, have taken, because I designed my yarn to match my fabrics, I can find fabrics that, you know, match match pretty well the same color. And that's that one. So that's really fun. So I'm gonna be talking a lot about how I find my inspiration to do granny squares and maybe have a few challenges and things like that. Meaning when I say a challenge on choosing your colors, on doing them, on what colors to choose. I hear a lot all year long about, I don't, I, ha I get stuck on, you know, what goes together well and things like that. Well. All of my yarn colors go together well. I designed them that way, but I understand what you mean. Sometimes you get stuck in the same, choosing the same colors over and over again because they happen to be your favorites. 
but I like to, for instance, have a, um, you know, just look around me. Like I'm, if I'm outside on my patio crocheting, then I'll look at maybe a flower or something that's out there and take inspiration from that. Meaning, so I'll grab a green and a blue and maybe the flower that's next to it, um, the container's blue and, and the flowers are pink and red. And so I'll just grab four colors and I'll just say, okay, I'm doing this. And I don't do a lot of planning. A lot of times I'll ask my kids, okay, here's my yarn bag, pick four colors that you think goes well together. And then I just choose the order that they go in. But it's just nice to have some inspiration like that. Um, and I'll do, you know, maybe a quick little challenge at the end. We'll talk about that. But anyway, so that's, that's kind of fun um, to have a quilt block and a granny square that's the same colors and so these will go in my quilt and um, then the third one that we're going to celebrate with as you know I'm a cross stitcher and also it's so Emma are my um, publishers for my cross stitch patterns and so I asked them if I could do a freebie I designed a granny square cross stitch and asked them if I could do a freebie and of course Kimberly said of course course we can do that and so here's my cross stitch that I have started so far let me show you the freebie here's the freebie right here so it's for four or a single one but that doesn't mean you can't they're just uh you know one one uh square apart and so you can keep adding and doing six or eight or three by three or nine by nine you can do a, whatever you want a long strip of them it'd be really fun now, we put coloring in here for my, uh, my Prim Arafloss set because a lot of you already have that Prim Arafloss set. And so that's what these are stitched in and colored in, but we also put DMC in there. But that doesn't mean that you have to follow that either. It's just like, just like with my yarn, you have a whole bunch of colors. And just like with cross stitch, I have a whole bunch of DMC that I use all the time. And so I can just grab from that. But what I did with this is I ended up doing the same thing. Sis, do you want to grab that tray? I'll just grab this out. I ended up doing the same thing. I thought, wouldn't that be fun to have a granny square? Here, let me find the pink one. To find a granny square. Now, yeah, I ended up using a little bit lighter pink than this, but have a granny square, a cross stitch, and a sewn quilt block all to match. So I'm putting that right in the middle. So you can see that's what I did. DMC doesn't match all of my fabrics exactly, but it doesn't matter. They don't need to match exactly. They just need to be like, I just know that this is a blue and this was more of a pewter color and this is a green. And you know, that's more of a raisin for the center. And so that's what I did that. So this is what I've done with my cross stitch so far. I had a scrap of fabric here left over from um, cross stitch that I just did. And this is 36 count um, cream and sugar by Fiber on a Whim. And I thought it would be really cute since this is done in, on 25 count Lugana. And we give you, um, you know, finished sizes on those and everything. But it might be really fun to do it really tiny. I always like to do that with my cross stitch patterns just so that you can see the difference on what you can do with them. And of course you use different size cloth depending on how big or small you want your stitch to be. But I for sure I'm going to add two more and then I might find a little frame, a little rectangle frame and put those in. I'm not sure. I could sew them into a pillow. But I, I'm having really fun cross stitching this and this is a free download of course designed by me and um, in conjunction with It's So Emma. And so I will leave a link to that free download and um, I hope you enjoy that. Let's see, I got two, oh, I got two pages. So this is the, this is the, what you're gonna get. Okay. And so super excited about that. So I invite you to uh, cross stitch with me and I will, I'm going to leave in the description what colors of DMC that I used for this. 
Some of them may be, may be the same as in the chart, but some of them may be different. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. Um, so for all of those 16 colors that I used for this, I'll let you know. So that's the quilting, that's the cross stitch. Here's the free download for that. And the Great Granny Squared book is um, available if you don't already have it. That's gonna be really fun. I can't wait to show you my progress on my blocks. And I'm not sure how big of a quilt I'm gonna be doing, but I'm just gonna keep sewing until, you know, until I'm finished sewing. All right, so back to the crochet, of course. This is a free PDF download as well, and I will leave a link there. So be sure to look at the description under the video and now let's talk about crochet a little bit. So this is what I have going on. As usual, here's my little tin and any leftover yarns I put here on my floss flowers. And I start in here in my tin when I'm doing my granny squares to do my center rows because this is enough to start uh, my center round. I shouldn't have said row, I should have said round. And so that's that's what's in there. Also, I wanted to let you know that if you did not see my last video on last Friday, I showed you how to make my crochet bags. This is for my notions. And then I made a couple, three. These are for my panels that holds my yarns. Okay, this one has a whole bunch of my yarns. <laughs> all in all colors that are already wound into cakes and this is what I've been using to make grannies okay I'll add these now I, I separated these because I wanted to show you but um I've got let's see these are in stacks of 12 12 let me pull my afghan so far so in the opening video you saw my afghan coming out of my basket and I have 12 rows on this. I feel like I'm dealing cards or something because look, I keep going like this around. I feel like I'm a blackjack dealer or something. Okay, so here's, here's my blanket. I'm so excited about this. This is looking so good. And you could stop at 12 if you wanted to, and that's a square blanket. And again, I'm, I've shown you how I join the rows together and to join them on my afghan, I just have to weave these. When I um, add the rows, I still have just these threads here on the end, and I will just weave those in, just like I've shown you before, okay? And then I am going to add six more rows onto this because I wanted this 12 by 18, all right? Once I add those rows on, then I'm gonna be showing you a tutorial on how I do a border. I'll be using several colors plus linen. I'll be ending up with a scalloped border of the linen, but I wanna do a fun little stitches, which is why I wanted to give you that chart right here so that we could talk about these stitches. And I wanted to do some fun things in different colors around the border. So the border, you know, I'm not sure yet because I haven't done it, but in my head I have it so that the stitches will be I don't know, an inch and a half wide of stitches, a couple inches, I don't know, and then end up with the scallop with the linen. All right, something else I wanted to tell you was, I am using linen, and when we last talked about the amount of yarn that you need of your finishing color, let's just call it finishing color, that that's the one you're doing your fifth, your fifth uh, round, with, so your grannies are four rounds and then your fifth is all the same color to join together. Um, I had done, I had used 10 skeins of yarn so far. Well, I, I wound five more into cakes, okay? And this is what I have left. So that means I've pretty much used, you know, 13, there's a little bit left. 13 to do 12 rows all joined together and then I've got enough for one more row with their outer border 
one more row, one more row with their outer border. So I, I would say 13 to 14 is a pretty good estimation if you're doing 12 across by 14, right? But I still have these two left to do the outside rows on these two. So see, I've got six ready to go. And then these are my extra that I've been working on for my next project that I'm gonna show you. But, um, so that's just an estimation to kind of, I was thinking in my head, probably we would need 20 to finish everything. And, you know, I'm not really sure if that's gonna be enough, but right now, this is where I'm at, at 15, just, just to let you know, so that you can get kind of a good estimation. And I knew I didn't know how much until I actually made it to tell you. And I know I told you that, but I just want to keep you updated so that you know, you know, what, what's going on, <coughs> excuse me, and how much you need to order. Okay. So another thing, oh, I've left an extra granny there. Okay, another thing I wanted to show you what I've been doing is using my stitch markers. So I showed you when I add my rows, I lay my, my afghan 12 across like this, okay? And because the quilts are in me, I like to lay them out in rows and things. And then I lay these out and know which one I want next. But I've been um, joining them together with my stitch markers. Markers. Where's my little bag? You know, and I know I've showed you these a million times. And there's going to be other projects that we're going to need these in. But these are just kind of look like cute little plastic diaper pins. <laughs> That's what they remind me of. And so I simply just pin them together like this so that I know what goes to what. And I'm joining mine with right sides together. So I'll just start at the end and I'll just join those and do that and take out the stitch marker and you know just continue on. And so I have my rows, rows joined like that. So I've got two ready to go. And I also take picture after I do this. I take a picture so I have it on my iPhone so I know which end, you know, which one, this, if this starts on this end, of the afghan or this end of the afghan and so that comes in handy so i wanted to give you that tip and i you know i'm thinking i'll be finished with this in a couple of weeks so i'll be um getting the next granny square along tutorial for you in the next couple of weeks but in the meantime i know you have plenty to do so you know we won't really be rushing on that and then Let's see, what do we want to talk about next? Maybe I will give you a challenge. Maybe I'll give myself a challenge. Let's just grab, let's grab this bag that has them, the skeins in them. This one is holding. And let's randomly grab four skeins. Well, those ones at the top look like they would make a great granny square. A great granny square. <laughs> <laughs> like the quilt. Okay, so I'm going to do this for my next granny square. This is going to be the center, and then this will be the second round, the third round, and the fourth round. So I challenge you to do one that looks like that and post it. I also challenge on Instagram, while well, I'm saying post it, and you can do it on Facebook. And of course, the hashtag is granny square long for this, um, for the crochet. And then I also challenge you to have one of your children or your husband or your mom or your sister or somebody in your family pick four of the chunky thread colors and make a granny square and then post that. And so let's see, that's one challenge. And I'll be doing different games throughout um, the summer to keep us like challenged, okay? And then maybe, maybe, um, one more challenge. We'll do this, this granny square, if you wanna do. I know that this is pebble, this is lipstick, this is beehive, and this is leaf. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Another idea that you can do is right here, there's some colors right here on the bag. 
that's an inspiration right there. There's only three rounds, but then you'd have to think of the fourth round, but that's okay, right? There's also granny squares here on the bag. Let me push that in. So you could use that as an inspiration. These, these actually have five rounds, so you would just use the first four. And so there's kind of a lot to look at for inspiration. And I think it's gonna be really fun to see your different postings and see your different inspirations, see your family pics and things like that. So that's what's going on in the crochet end. And there's the chart again. Let me pull this back in. This is going on with the cross stitch. Please go visit there through the link and download this. And then my great granny squared book right there, sis, is for the sewing. So we're gonna have triple granny square fun. And I hope you join me. Please leave me a comment. And if you have any questions um, that I haven't covered here in this video, um, go ahead and ask me the question and I'll get back to you with an answer. And please leave me a comment. Let me know what you're going to be doing this summer for the Granny Square Along. If you're gonna be doing all three, or you're gonna be doing two, or one, or what you're gonna be doing. I'd love to hear, and we'd all love to hear. And I'm excited to look at your posts on Instagram, and I'll continue posting my progress as we go along. And thanks for joining me. I'm so excited about this. I hope you are too, and I'll chat with you later. Thank you.